we think about the different energy sources that we use nowadays, solar, wind, fossil fuels, somehow they've always been there. Nuclear is really the only energy source we have discovered in thousands of millions of years. It blows my mind that I come into work every day in a lab where we can split the atom, we can reshape the nature of atoms themselves. Um, really fundamentally, it is alchemy. Like we are changing the element and making new elements than what were there beforehand. And something that I've found in research that's really exciting and, and why I'm continued to, to be driven is this unique aspect where, where you can dig into this knowledge bubble that's already formed to start investigating and probing materials in, in a way that uh, you wouldn't be able to elsewhere. Uh, nuclear engineering harnesses the greatest power known to man and as such comes the greatest responsibility known to man. You know, I look at a lot of technology with a mixture of interest and fear. Everyone should. All technology has that offer. Nuclear is no different. But it suffers from irrational fear more than anything else. One of the things that I've learned from being in this field is that there's a lot of ignorance and ignorance drives fear. And so all of the work we do is really to mitigate um, those risks and make sure that, you know, if there is an incident, then yes, we know how to deal with it. I've always been drawn to problems that have both like a technical science and more of a policy or a social aspect. And so the stigma aspect around nuclear science is in some ways what actually drew me to it. Education is the only way to address that. All this knowledge has to be transferred to the next generation so they can uh, benefit from it and build the next generation nuclear power, next generation medical devices. We have the intersection between both a, a world-class university and a world-class department and you know 150 meters away from the university we have one of the Department of Energy's national labs we have the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory now question why liquid fuel high temperature high temperature Usually, I think the, the approach that we try to take is uh, start with open questions. So questions for which we don't have an answer. And in the process, of course, uh, uh, teach, teach the tools, that, uh, teach those, uh, those fundamentals, those foundations. When we are in the classroom with professors like Max uh, Fratoni, you get that passion transferred to you. You want to come up with better solutions. And so, it's pretty exciting to have that freedom to start investigating and probing materials in, in a way that you wouldn't be able to elsewhere. So I think over time, as the students go through the process, that mystery must become more like tangible. Because we have these, this unique subset of experimental uh, instruments and the knowledge base that I've gathered and, and discussion with other researchers, it allows you to combine all that information and, and actually create new knowledge. We can turn lead into gold, and we actually somewhat routinely do. Turns out that turning lead into a couple different types of gold makes for an incredibly effective therapy agent for ovarian cancer. You know, nuclear medicine, the development of radiopharmaceuticals have really taken off in the last couple of decades, where we have made enormous progress to diagnose people early so that we can develop new treatments and effective treatments. And so all of these people are starting to bring those new designs actually to life. But that requires a lot of more fundamental knowledge that we don't have yet. Uh, yeah, the most fundamental uh, science, most fundamental physics and chemistry uh, helps us understand the processes at the heart of the matter. Now the, it's the engineer's tasks to harness that and to uh, put it in a useful form. We're working to make a profound impact 
in benefiting the lives of potentially all of humankind. To me, the discovery and the role of nuclear is so fundamental in the history of humanities that uh, uh, really I think we should, we should share it and, and, and use it in the right way, of course. Creativity is the core thing that differentiates us from machines. So when our students come here with that creativity, I view it as my job is to give them the tools to express that creativity.